Alright, so welcome to another video on fluid mechanics and today we're going to be talking about hydrostatic pressure. Now, we know that if we have something like a diver that is basically just swimming around in the ocean or at sea, we know that as we descend we get a higher pressure, so the pressure increases as you move downwards and we want to know what the reason for that is. So basically this is something that we call the hydrostatic pressure because we can consider the ocean as a single mass that is static even though there are water currents moving around. But this is a fundamental principle. It basically means that as you move downwards the pressure is going to increase and we want to be able to quantify by how much that increase happens based on the type of fluid that we're swimming in. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to think about, okay, so how do we actually model pressure variation? So suppose we have a water surface, and now let's draw a little bit of a point here. So let's draw point A, and now let's draw a point B. Now suppose that we wanted to know what the pressure in A is compared to the pressure in B. So we wanted to know what the difference in pressure between those two arbitrary points are. Now obviously pressure is force over area. So in order to calculate the difference in pressure we're going to be required to use some sort of area. So to do that we're going to draw something very simple. We're going to have something that looks like this. So it's going to look something like a cube, and we're going to give it very small dimensions. So let's just be very arbitrary. We're going to have delta x, delta y, and now let's have delta z. Alright, so that basically means that if we look at the area, so suppose that all these dimensions are the same, because we want to have a cube. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a projection of this cube all the way to the top, so basically we have this kind of shape. So what is happening here is we have a column of fluid that is going to have the following volume. So let's first of all choose a very very um, convenient set of axes. So we know that Z is in this direction so we're gonna denote this distance Z. So we're gonna take our depth with reference to the surface of the water here. And now that means that this point B here is going to be located at some distance Z plus delta Z because that is essentially the height of this arbitrary cube of fluid that we have chosen here. Now the volume of this column of fluid is going to be different for both A and B. So A is at this point here, so basically it's across this plane and then point B is across this plane at the bottom. So we have something like this. Now the volume here is going to be dependent upon two things. So we're going to have a height of Z, and now we're going to have some area dA. All right, and in this case, the, the area dA doesn't matter what it is. It's just going to be, um, actually, let's call it delta A. I'm thinking about infinitesimals when I should be thinking about just some sort of, let's call it delta A, and it's going to be equal to delta X times delta Y. So that's going to be the volume of this column of fluid right above point A. Now what do you think is going to be the volume right above point B? Well it is going to be this plus some element of volume delta V. So let's just draw it here. So basically the volume above point B is going to be V plus some element delta V. All right. So now what we want to know is exactly what the forces are at each point. So we know that the forces are going to be, in this case, just related to the mass and the gravity. All right, so force equals mass times gravity, so we want to find the force. Now, in order to find the mass, in essence, we're finding the mass of water above each of these points. We're going to require to know the density, so mass equals to density times volume. So the force in this case as a function of the density of the fluid is just going to be rho v times g. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so the force at A is going to be the total weight of the water above point A. That is simply going to be rho 
v, but we already said that v is this quantity here, so we're going to have rho g times set delta a. All right? So basically what we can do now is we can change this quantity rho g by the specific weight of the fluid. So that's represented by the letter gamma times set delta a. So this is going to be the force that is basically or the weight resting on top of point A here. So it is this plane. Now we're going to do the exact same for point B. So for point B we're going to have the following. We're going to have rho g, but now you're going to notice that the volume is going to be v plus delta v. All right. So let's see what that comes down to. Well, we know that V is going to be the same. It's just going to be set times delta A. So we're going to have rho G. Actually, let's change that already by the specific weight, gamma. Now here we're going to have the following. We're going to have set delta A. And here we're going to have plus delta Z times delta A because we know this is going to be the same cross-sectional area as this volume here, but now the actual volume is going to be just delta Z. That's the height of the cube here. All right, so now let's just expand this out. This is going to be gamma Z delta A plus gamma delta Z delta A. And now the next thing we're going to do is we want to find the actual pressure at points A and B. So we know, okay, so pressure at A is just going to be force A over the total area. So the total area is just going to be delta A. And that means that the total pressure at this point is just going to be gamma Z delta A over delta A. These two are going to cancel out, and that gives us specific weight times the depth set. Okay, we're going to do now the same for pressure at point B. So that's going to be force at B. So that's the weight of water or fluid above point B over the total cross-sectional area. And that's going to come down to gamma Z plus gamma delta Z. And now hopefully you can see where this is going. The idea originally was to find out what the difference between between those two points is in terms of the pressure. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, so the difference in pressure is going to be equal to pressure at B minus pressure at A. And we're basically claiming that the pressure at point B is going to be greater than the pressure at point A simply because it is deeper. And I guess the, the best or most intuitive way of thinking about that is you can think about this as in the case of the two divers this diver has more weight of water resting on top of him than this diver does. You can clearly see that the amount of water resting on top of him is much less than the amount of water resting directly on top of this one. So it makes sense that pressure at B, because it is deeper, is going to be much larger than the pressure at point A. And the same happens in this case that we have here. So now we're going to plug those values in. So we're going to have delta Z plus, sorry, gamma Z plus gamma delta Z minus gamma Z. And it turns out that these two quantities are going to cancel out. So that gives us gamma delta Z. So that basically implies that the difference in pressure between those two points is going to be equal to the specific weight of the fluid times the variation in the depth that we're taking into account. And it so happens that as you take that distance between the two points very, very close, you actually get an infinitesimal uh, relationship between the pressure variation and the variation in depth. So if we take the limit, basically as the separation between the two points goes to zero, then this equation is going to reduce to an infinitesimal relation. So we're going to have dp equals to gamma dz. And this is what the variation of pressure with variation in depth is basically defined as. And this is basically where it comes from. There are many different derivations to this simple relation, but this is the one that I like the most because it's very intuitive and it is very straightforward. It doesn't require any 
complicated calculus in it. You just take into account that the volume of water here is less than the volume of water there, and you're simply calculating the difference in pressures between those two points. So now let's think a, a little bit about what this actually means. So as we increase essentially the depth in our in our case, as we increase the depth, so if we go, if we dive deeper into the fluid, there's going to be more weight of water or of whatever fluid it is resting on top of us, and that means that we're gonna feel a greater force. So the pressure is going to be much larger. And if we ascend, then that means that the pressure is going to decrease because there's less mass of water resting on top of us. Now, in some cases, you can you might be see uh, this equation written in the following way: you would have minus gamma times d z, and the reason this is a more common representation of that is that this is normally taken with reference to the sea floor. So basically, this equation would be taken if z was oriented upward. So it means that your pressure is actually decreasing as you move upwards towards the surface of the fluid. But the two equations are pretty much the same. This one is just taken with respect to set as going upwards. This one is taken with set going downwards. So they're equivalent expressions. And this pretty much encapsulates that uh, physical phenomenon of the pressure being much larger as you descend into the fluid. Now, what do you think would happen with the pressure as you move along the fluid in either the x direction or the y direction? Well, it turns out that if you take the pressure at this point here, or the pressure <coughs> at this point there, it doesn't matter what that separation delta x is, you can imagine that the amount of fluid resting on top of this point is exactly the same as the amount of fluid resting on top of that point. So the weights that are basically acting on those two points are going to be exactly the same, assuming that the fluid is the same and it is continuous. And that means that we should expect the pressure at this point, let's call it point x, and at point x plus delta x, to be exactly the same. So the pressure is not going to vary in either the x or the y direction, simply because the same mass of fluid is resting on top of each of those points. And the same thing happens for the case of delta y. So you can imagine that pressure only varies in a fluid as you go deeper and deeper into it. And the, the one quantity that is going to basically tell you by how much that pressure is varying is going to be the specific gravity of the fluid, which is just its density times, not the specific gravity, but the specific weight, which is just rho times g. So hopefully this has cleared up a little bit of what hydrostatic pressure is, where it comes from, and why the variation of pressure only happens with respect to the depth of the fluid and not across. Now in the next video we're going to see how this equation can actually be solved for a few special cases and what that can tell us about different types of fluids.